Mabuhay! Isang mapagpalang araw sa ating lahat. Ako ang inyong lingkod, Tutor Match. Welcome sa ating e life ang ating libreng online tutorial na hatid ng ating kagawaran ng edukasyon, ICTS EdTech. Ang programang ito ay inaasahang makatutulong at maging karagdagang kaalaman sa mga mag-aaral mula kinder hanggang senior high school. Pulse, alive, at sped learners. Bukod sa pagsagot ng mga modules, ang e ay may mga special programs din na siguradong aabangan ninyo araw-araw. Katuwang ang ating mga minamahal na mga magulang at guro ay maitutulay natin ang pagkatuto. Kaya, ihanda na ang inyong module, lapis, papel o kwaderno. Ihanda rin ang isip, mata at tenga sa isa na namang makabuluhang aralin. Tayo nang matuto kasama ang inyong volunteer online tutor sa oras na ito. Okay, ayan. So, good afternoon. Hello? Ayan. Good afternoon, uh, everybody, sa lahat ng mga nanonood sa ating uh, live stream via FB and YouTube pages. Uh, magandang hapon sa ating lahat. And uh, welcome to our DepEd e online tutorial for Grade 6 Mathematics. Ayan. Okay. So, bago mo tayo magsimula, uh, babatingin ko muna ang ating mga viewers. So, Ito, nakita ko. So, good afternoon kay, uh, good afternoon tutors from Santa Cruz Elementary School, Santa Cruz, Laguna. Shout out to Six Rizal, Six Aquino, Six Agoncillo, si Renz, Christian Tobias. Ayan, good afternoon. Ayan, nakita ko din si Rihanna Al Abadier. Rihanna Abadier, good afternoon po, watching from Santa Cruz Central Elementary School. Ayan, good afternoon. And of course, ating mga suking-suking mga... Uh, mga chutis, ang ating mga soulmates. Ayan, good afternoon din sa inyo. Ayan, so may nagpapabate. Pabate po, sir. Wala sa aking uh, kumpare and kapwa teacher din, si Sir Justin Angelo Padrone Salazar. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, from SDOE mo si to. Ayan, good afternoon. And again, uh, last na lang po, si Kate April Samos Mendoza. Good afternoon po, watching from Kalinawan uh, Elementary School, Santo Tomas uh, District. Ayan. So, magandang hapon po sa lahat ng mga viewers. Okay. So, again, uh, in behalf of Tutor Prince, ang inyong soulmate, ako po muna ang makakasama nyo this afternoon. Ako po si Tutor Andre, ang inyong Math Bay. At ito po ang uh, Grade 6 Mathematics. So, every Friday nyo po kami, laging abangan sa ating live stream. 1 o'clock p.m. to 1.40 p.m. po via our FB and YouTube pages sa ating DepEd EdTech Unit, DepEd Tayo, DepEd Philippines, DepEd EdTech, at DepEd TV. And of course, uh, kung uh, sasabihin ko na din na uh, papapalood nyo na rin kami sa inyo mga TV sa ating uh, DepEd TV, IBC TV 13 or Channel 13 po at sa Signal TV, maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, so ayan. Every Monday naman po yun, by the way. So, ayan. So, bago tayo magsimula na ating discussion for quarter 2, by the way, simula na po pala ng ating quarter 2, finally. At uh, napakabilis ng panahon. So, quarter 2 na agad tayo. So, before we start, let's have our homework. So, last meeting or last week, ay nagbigay ako ng assignment sa inyo about our lesson about terminating and non, uh, repeating non-terminating. And of course, yung ating... Uh, division of decimals by powers of 10. But here we have this simple homework. So we're going to determine whether the given decimals show terminating or repeating, non-terminating, and uh, you will determine its equivalent fraction. So sa mga nakakuha po ng uh, mga tamang sagot, congratulations na nakapag-post sa ating mga uh, FB page sa ating Deped Itulay FB page. Ayan. So, first one is 6.7 or 6 and 7 tenths. So, that is, of course, a terminating decimal. And since it's terminating, so, uh, what is its equivalent fraction? So, kung paano siya binabasa, ganun din natin siya isusulat as a fraction. So, that is 6 and 7 tenths. So, 6 and 7 over 10. Ayan. 
Okay, next, 0 0.26. So that is, of course, obviously, it's a terminating decimal, no? So again, it's a terminating decimal. With uh, the equivalent fraction, of course, you will answer that in simplest form. So 0 0.26 or 2,600 is 26 over 100. Or in simplest form is 13 over 50. Since the GCF of 26 and 100 is 2. And lastly, okay, so this is 0 0.4 with a bar above 4. So we have a vinculum there. So we have 0 0.44444 and so on. So obviously, called me bar, that is a repeating non-terminating because the vinculum or the bar uh, symbolizes uh, digits that are repeated. So yung umuulit na digits. So it's a repeating non-terminating. And obviously, uh, to write that as a fraction, so we have uh, 4 over 9. Because if you try to divide 4 by 9, the result will be 0 0.4 with a bar. Okay. Sige po. Ayan. So for our duties of the week, for quarter 1, week 9, yung ating last uh, week session. So that is to be announced na lang muna. So medyo bibitinin ko muna kay Jaan. Uh, hopefully, by uh, our next session, we'll have our um, duties of the week for our quarter one, week nine. Okay, so let's have, <clears throat> excuse me, let's have our lesson for today. And for our, uh, this week's lesson, quarter two, week one, to start the quarter two, we have relating fraction and ratio and defining and illustrating ratio and proportion. Okay. So, muli na nagpapasalamat po tayo sa division office na nagpahiram po sa ating uh, module na gagamitin po natin this afternoon session. Okay, so yan po yung develop, uh, development team of the module. We have the writer, uh, Ma'am Lalin Galon Lumandog, editors, Ma'am Maria Portia Genshaneo Galanto, and Colin Gange or Gange Sales. And reviewers, illustrator, layout artists, and management team. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo, mga ma'am and sir. And ganoon din po sa ating uh, quarter 2, modules 1 and 2 po ang ginamit natin. Okay. After this session, you are expected to uh, know the following. So, yan. So, recognize that the relationship between two quantities can be shown using ratios and proportions. Second, we have to use concrete objects or draw pictorial models to show the relationship between ratios and fractions. And of course, uh, express one value as a fraction of another, given their ratio and vice versa. And you will also define ratio and proportion and recognize when two ratios make up a proportion. So hopefully, I malaman natin ang mga yan. Okay, so let us have our first discussion. We have expressing one value as a fraction of another, given their ratio and vice versa. Okay. So for this lesson, let's consider this problem. Okay, so we have there the problem. Raymond bought three avocados and eight mangoes. Hmm, masarap gawing shake yan. Minsan, namiinit yung panahon natin eh. Okay, so what you're going to do is, uh, having those fruits, you will use ratios and fractions to compare the number of fruits that he bought. So how will you do that? So of course, again, you're given... Three avocados. Ayan. Na may googly eyes. And uh, nakasmile siya. Happy, happy. And of course, you have eight mangoes. Uy, mukhang masarap-sarap yung mangga natin dyan. We have parang Indian mango ito. No? Anyway, sige. So let's have uh, this table. Ayan. So as you can see, um, if we try to compare quantities, so you have the following. So we can express the given uh, fruits. Uh, in ratio. So ratio can be written in different ways. So you can have either in colon form, of course, using the punctuation mark colon, and of course, ratio in fraction form, of course, expressed as a fraction. So if we consider the number of avocados to the number of mangoes, so we will write that in ratio uh, in colon form, that is 3 is to 8. So that is read as 3 or 3 is to 8. Ayan. And in fraction form, if we'll express the number of avocados to the number of mangoes in fraction form, that can be written as 3 over 8. Or still, that is read as 3 is to 8. 
On the other hand, let's consider the number of avocados to the number of mangoes. So as you can see, if you write that in uh, column form, that can be written as 8 is to 3. And if, it, if you write that in fraction form, that can be written as 8 over 3. Okay. Ayan. So let's have the given. So yung po yung given natin earlier. So we can say that the number of avocados is 3 eighths of the number of mangoes. So kung ano man po yung bilang ng mangoes, you will multiply that by 3 eighths to get the number of avocados. Okay? So tatandaan niyo po yan. And on the other hand, we can also say that the number of mangoes is 8 thirds of the number of avocados. Kung ano man po yung bilang ng avocados, you will multiply that by 8 over 3, then you will get the number of mangoes. Okay. Now, let's have another example. So suppose we have this... Uh, Two quantities. This time we compare the number of avocados to the total number of fruits. Okay, so if we write that in a colon form, ratio in colon form, so that can be written as 3 is to 11 because uh, we get the sum of the uh, fruits. 3 plus 8 is 11, so we have 3 is to 11. And in uh, fraction form, ratio in fraction form, that can be written as 3 over 11. And of course, for the next one, we have the number of, okay, I think uh, I'll just correct this. So it should be the number of mangoes. Uh, I said corrected on that. So number of mangoes to the total number of fruits. So similarly, since the number of mangoes is 8 and the total number of fruits is 11, so we have the ratio in column form 8 is to 11. And in fraction form, that is 8 over 11 or 8 elevenths. Now, so again, this is mangoes. So we can now say that the number of avocados is 3 elevenths of the total number of fruits. Ayan. So again, Kung man po yung total number of fruits, you multiply that by 3 elevenths, then you will get the number of avocados. Tandaan niyo po yan. And similarly, the number of mangoes is 8 elevenths of the total number of fruits. So kung ano man po yung kabuang bilang ng mga prutas, you multiply that by 8 elevenths, then you will get the number of mangoes. Okay. So, yan yung dapat nyong tandaan, my dear students. Okay. So, ayan. So, let's go to the next. Okay. Let's consider this next problem. Sophia's height is five-sevenths of Arnel's height. Mm. So, let's see. How do you illustrate that using picture models? Ayan. So, we can represent that as this. So, you have their five blocks. So we can uh, represent five blocks for the height of Sophia. And of course, the next one, you have their one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven blocks. So that can be represented by, uh, that is represented rather by Arnel's height. Okay, now, as you can see, by using blocks or picture models, we can say that the ratio of Sophia's height to Arnel's height is 5 is to 7. Okay, yan. And we can also say that the ratio of Arnel's height to Sophia's height is 7 is to 5. Okay, so please take note of that, uh, grade 6 students. Okay, now. Their total height is equal to 12 units. Since if you add the 5 blocks uh, by the 7 blocks, so that is 5 plus 7 equals to 12. So their total height is equal to 12 units. Now, again, the ratio of Arnel's height to their total height is 7 is to 12. Ayan. So as you can see, 
uh, we count the number of blocks. That is Arnel's height. So it's seven. Then your total height is 12. So seven is to 12. And similarly, uh, we can say that Arnel's height is seven twelfths of their total height. So kung naman po yung combination or total ng height nilang dalawa, you multiply that by seven twelfths, then you will get Arnel's height. Okay, now, so hopefully naiintindihan nyo na po yung ating mga given uh, problem and the uh, uh, concept of ratio. So let us have this uh, problem. Yeah. Okay, so now kids, I want you to try to answer this uh, problem. So this is our situation. Hassan had 15 pesos. Julie had 30 pesos. And Arnel had 21 pesos. So you're going to fill in the blank with the correct one. So I want you to comment your answers. Sabay-sabay uh, nyo ng sagutan yan. So the first blank. The total amount of money they had is blank. Second question. The ratio of the amount of money Julie had to, to the amount of money Arnel had in its simplest form is blank, is to blank. And lastly, the amount of money Hassan had is blank of the amount of money Arnel had. Okay, let us see. Um, uh, by the way, so as you can see, you have the instruction. Uh, make sure to express ratios in simplest form. Uh, since ratio can be uh, simplified, just like fractions, right? So they can be expressed as uh, in simplest form. Okay. So may mga sagot na pa tayo. Ayan, so may nakita ako. Again, na, I need three answers for our uh, problem. So nakita ko na, uh, according to Henry Stephen Kadaban, so number one is 66 pesos. Number two is 10 is to 7. Then number three is 5 is to 7. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. And to Henry Stephen Kadapan. So we're still waiting for the others. May mga answers na ba iba? Although may mga nagsagot, si Adrian Ray, 66 pesos. Si Gracie, Kuya Nisala, 66 pesos. Kerubin Gabriel, 66 pesos. Okay, si Nerwin Negal, 66 pesos. 7 is to 10. And five sevens. Ayan si Nerwin. Ganun din. Parang same lang sila nung sagot ni uh, Henry, no? Ay, okay, wait. So, nagkaroon ng... Ayan. Okay. So, sagot naman ni Arian, 66 pesos. Then, second blank is 10 is to 7. Then, third is 5 is to 7. So, let us see how you did. Okay, ganun din kay Adrian. Okay, let's have the answers. So, first... We answer number one. The total amount of money they had is, of course, you do the simple addition. So that is 15 pesos plus 30 pesos plus 21 pesos. So, of course, that is equivalent to uh, 66 pesos. So, therefore, the answer is 66 pesos. Okay. The second, the ratio of the amount of money Julie had to the amount of money Arnel had in its simplest form, is blank is to blank. Okay. So, magkano ulit yung kay Julie? So, Julie had 30 pesos. So, that is 30 pesos is to, okay, yung kay Arnel ay 21 pesos. So, Arnel had 21 pesos. So, that is 30 is to 21. But in our given problem, it says you have to express the ratio in simplest form. Form. So, therefore, our answer will be, of course, 30 to 21 can be simplified by uh, dividing them both by their GCF, which is 3. So, that is 30 divided by 3 and 21 divided by 3. So, 30 divided by 3 is 10 and then 21 divided by 3 is 7. So, that is 10 is to 7 or in fractions, that is 10 over 7. Okay, and let's have the third problem. The amount of money Hassan had is blank of the amount of money Arnel had. So, magkano yung kay Hassan? So, Hassan has 15 pesos. So, check natin yung ratio muna ng money ni Hassan sa money ni Arnel. So, yung kay Hassan ay 15. So, 15 is 2. Arnel's money had 
21 pesos. So 15 is to 21. And of course, to simplify that, we divide them by 3. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. And 21 divided by 3 is 7. So that is 5 is to 7. Or in fraction form, that is 5, 7. So therefore, the answer is the amount of money Hassan had is 5 sevenths of the amount of money Arnel had. Okay, very good kids. Ang gagaling niya. Okay, so all of you got the correct answer. Let's proceed to the next. Okay, wait, meron pa pala. Ayan. This time, let's have this. The amount of money Julie had is blank of the total amount of money they had. Take note, ah. The amount of money Julie had is blank of the total amount of money they had. Ayan. So next is, in its simplest form, Take note of the problem. In its simplest form, the ratio of the total amount of money Hassan and Arnel had to the total amount of money all three had is blank is to blank. Again, comment your answers in our FB Live page. Okay, so while waiting, so batiin ko lang muna yung mga iba. Ayan, so sa aking friend, kumpare, uh, Nino Christian Ang, Thank you sa panonood. Maraming maraming salamat. Ayan, kay Kurt Paolo Villegas, thank you po. Ayan, so yung mga former students ko din, nanonood, si Eliza Massa. Hello, Eliza. Ayan. Okay. Ayan, may mga sagot na ang ating kids. So according here, Henny Stephen Kadapan, 5-11s, and then 6 is to 11. Okay. Si, again na, simplest form po tayo dapat. So, nakikita ko. Ayan, si Gerald RV, 5 is to 22. Hmm, 5 is to 22. Magkaiba ng sagot. Okay, so si Nerwin Negal, 15 is to 33 and 6 over 11. So, again, ha, make sure to simplify your answers. Ayan, si Angelic Joyce Quintano, her answer naman is 15 is to 66 and then 6 is to 11. Ah, magkakaiba-iba kayo ng sagot, ha? Again, na kids, Make sure to simplify your answers because just like fractions, ratios can be uh, simplified or ratio can be written in simplest form. Ayan, si Gerald RV, 5 is to 22, 6 is to 11. Ayan. Si Neil Steven Lopez, 5 over 11, uh, 6 is to 11. Ayan. So, check natin kids kung ano kaya ang tamang sagot. Okay, let's have this first uh, question. The amount of money Judy had is blank of the total amount of money they had. So if you remember earlier, the total amount of money they had is 66 pesos, right? So from that, we get first the amount of money Julie had. So Julie had 30 pesos. So that can be expressed. Of money they had is 66 pesos. So that is 30 over 66. And of course, that is not yet uh, in simplest form. So we have to simplify. So how do we simplify this? We will divide both numerator and denominator by their GCF. And their GCF is 3. Ayan. So therefore, we have, or should I say 6? I stand corrected. Their GCF is 6. Okay? Since they are both divisible by 6. So therefore, we have 5 is to 11. Or 5 11. So the first answer is 5 elevenths. Ayan. So the amount of money Julie had is 5 elevenths of the total amount of money they had. Ayan. So tatanda niyo po yan, kids, ha? Okay, next. In its simplest form, the ratio of the total amount of money Hassan and Arnel had to the total amount of money all three had is blank is to blank. So again, a uh, total amount of money ni Hassan and Arnel. So, meaning you have to get their sum. No? So, Hassan's money is 15 pesos and Arnel's money is 21 pesos. So, 15 plus 21. So, that is 36. So, that can be expressed as 36. Is 2. Of course, the amount of the money of all three. So, we had earlier 66 pesos. So, that is 36 over 66. Or, if we simplify that, again, we will be dividing both numerator and denominator by their GCF. 
So since the GCF of 36 and 66 is 6, so we have to divide them both by 6. So the final answer will be 6 is to 11 or 6 11. So 6 is to 11. So our final answer should be 5 11 and 6 is to 11. Okay. Ang gagaling na ating mga kids. Very good. Okay. Sige. Tinapan natin. Let's have another one. Okay. This time you have this next problem. In a box, the number of squares is five times as much as the number of triangles. The number of circles is four-fifths of the number of squares. First is to draw a model to compare the numbers of squares, triangles, and circles. So again, uh, visualize natin, kids. Ayan. So in a box, the number of squares is five times as much as the number of triangles. And the number of circles is four-fifths of the number of squares. So, paano kaya yon? Okay. Sige. So, drawing muna natin. So, paano nga ba ito drawing yan? Ayan. So, mangyayari kayo na to. So, we have there the number of triangles. So, depende nyo yung number of squares sa number of triangles. Because according to the problem, uh, the number of squares is five times as much as the number of Triangle. So, suppose we have one triangle. So, how many squares do we have? So, since the number of triangle is 1, so therefore, we have 1 times 5 or 5 times 1. And that is 5. So, therefore, we have 5 squares. So, if we have one triangle, then we will be having 5 squares. Nakuha niyo po ba yun? And So, hopefully, nakuha niyo yan, kids. Now, next. It says here, second sentence, the number of circles is four-fifths of the number of squares. So yung bilang daw ng circles ay four-fifths daw nung number of squares. As since the number of squares is five, so we get four-fifths of five. Eh, ano ba ang four-fifths ng five? So four-fifths times five will be, of course, we cancel the five. So, we'll be having four. So, therefore, we will be having four circles. So, ayan na. Tanda niyo po yan, kids. So, if we try to draw a model for that, so we will be having one triangle, five squares, and four uh, circles. Okay. So, tanda niyo yan. One triangle, five squares, and four circles. Okay. Now, let's consider the questions here. Ayan. What fraction of the number of circles is the number of triangles? Sige nga, mabilis lang tayo. What fraction of the number of circles is the number of triangles? What fraction? So I'm looking for a fraction. What fraction? Okay, so according here, and with Stephen Kadapan, 4 is to 1. Ian Gale Ramos Dilay, 4 is to 1. Nerwin, 4 is to 1. Angelique, 4 is to 1. Ayan. So, puro 4 is to 1 ang sagot. So, actually, the answer is 4 is to 1. Or 4 over 1. Since we are asked to find the fraction. Since we have 4 circles and uh, 1 triangle. Ayan. So, what fraction of the number of circles is the number of triangles? So, the answer is 4 over 1. Okay. Now, the third one. Find the ratio of the number of squares to the number of triangles to the number of circles. Ayan. Parang nilahat Okay. So again, find the ratio of the number of squares to the number of triangles to the number of circles. Hmm. Sige. Ano kaya ang uh, sagot natin saan? Again, I'm looking for the ratio of the number of squares to the number of triangles to the number of circles. So, ayan, nakita ko let. Mm -hmm. Based on uh, what I'm seeing right now, 5 is to 1 is to 4. Ang sagot ni Henry Stephen Kadapan. Mm -hmm. Napaka-active ni Henry, no? How about the others? Again, now we're looking for the ratio of the number of squares to the number of triangles to the number of circles. So, sabi din ni Nerwin Negal Jr., 5 
5 is to 1 is to 4. Adrian Ray Rivera, 5 is to 1 is to 4. Ganun din si Trisha Denise Estanislao and si Aldrich Mecate. Ayan, si Kirst Kestrel Villanueva. Ayan, si Mel Aiski, 5 is to 1 is to 4. Okay, so therefore, we have the correct answer, 5 is to 1 is to 4. So syempre, bibilangin nyo lang yung ating given. So number of squares, we have 5. Number of triangles, we have 1. And number of circles, we have 4. So we have now, 5 is to 1 is to 4. Okay, very good. Ang gagaling ha. Sige, let's have the next question. In its simplest form, what is the ratio of the number of triangles and circles to the total number of shapes? Ayan. In its simplest form, what is the ratio of the number of triangles and circles to the total number of shapes? And pakisabay na rin tong number 5 para mabilisan tayo. Express the number of circles as a fraction of the total number of shapes in its simplest form. Again, pagsabihin nyo na po yung sagot, 4 and 5. Express the number of circles as a fraction of the total number of shapes in its simplest form. Ayan. Okay, sige. Ano kaya ang sagot natin? So, abang nihintay natin, uh, bati mo na ako sa mga manonood natin. So, ayan, si Trisha Denise Estanislao. Good afternoon po, Tutor Andre. Watching from West Central School, Santa Maria, Pangasinan, Region 1. Wow, all the way from Pangasinan. Hello po. Ang advisor ay si Ma'am Gloria Petrola. Ayan, love loud. Okay. Ayan, so sino pa ba yung mga ating mga suking viewers? Ayan, so good afternoon. May mga sumagot na ba? Kasi wala pa akong nakikitang sagot. Ayan, meron na pala. So again, si Henry ulit ang una. So, ang sagot niya ay number 4, 1 is to 2 is to 5. Then number 5 is 2 over 5. Si Rihanna Abadir then we have 1 is to 2 is to 5. Then 2 over 5. Then similarly, ganun din si Princess Lorraine Del Rosario. We have 1 is, ah, iba yung kay Princess. Sabi niya 1 is to 4 is to 10. Eh, huh? Si Nerwin, 1 is to 2 is to 5. Then 2 over 5. Ayan. So, parang pare-pares naman ang sagot ng karamihan. Pero din si Gracie Pionisala, si Adrian uh, Rivera. Ayan. So, let's see how you did. In its simplest form, what is the ratio of the number of triangles and circles? Take note, ha? Number of triangles and circles. So, meaning, pagsasamahin nyo, kids, yung number ng triangles and circles. So, i-add nyo yun. Ilan ba ang triangle? Di ba ang triangle is one? So, you have one plus ilan ang circle? 4. So that is 1 plus 4. Eh, what is 1 plus 4? Diba that is 5? So you'll have 5 is to what? So 5 is to the total number of shapes. Ilan ba lahat-lahat ng shapes? So you have 1 plus 5 plus 4. Eh, what is 1 plus 5 plus 4? That is 10. So therefore, that is 5 is to 10. But that is not yet in simplest form. So we have to express that in simplest form. So therefore, we divide 5 and 10 by 5. Since the GCF of 5 and 10 is 5. So we have 1 is to 2. So therefore, our answer is 1 is to 2. Okay. Wag po kayo malilito dun grade 6 kids, ha? Ayan. So when we have the given problem like that, so katulad yan, so baka naisip nyo kasi magkahiwalay yung number of triangles, tapos hiwalay siya sa number of circles, tapos hiwalay pa din siya sa number o sa total number of shapes. Hindi po. Kasi, take note of the word number of triangles and circles. Pag sabing end, pagsasamahin mo yung dalawa. So, yung bilang ng triangle, i-add mo sa bilang ng circle. Okay? Magiging sagot nyo lang ay 1 is to 4 is to 10 kapag Ang problem ay number of triangles to the number of circles to the total number of shapes. So, separate yun. Magkakahiwa-hiwalay sila. Ayan na. So, wag na wag po kayo malilito doon ha. Grade 6. Okay? Sige, let's go to the next. Number 5. Express the number of circles as a fraction of the total number of shapes in its simplest form. So, paano daw yun? Number of circles as a fraction. To the total number of shapes. Eh, di ba? We have 4 circles. And the total number of shapes is 10. So, you have 4 over 10. And again, 
we will simplify 4 tenths by dividing both numerator and denominator by 2. So therefore, you have 2 over 5. So therefore, 2 fifths is the final answer. Ayan. So hopefully, makuha nyo na po yung tamang sagot. Okay, let us proceed to the next. Ayan. So let's have the next one. Defining and illustrating ratio and proportion. So ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng ratio and proportion? Ayan. Wow, gaganda ng mga kotse, no? Sana all, may car. Ayan. <laughs> ganda ng cars, no? Okay. Marunong ba kayo? Gusto nyo ba magkaroon ng kotse? Gusto nyo? Pwede bumili kayo. Hindi, <laughs> joke lang po. Ayan. Siyempre, makakabili din tayo ng kotse soon. Ayan. Okay. So, let's consider this problem. Carol finds a, to uh, a number of cars in a parking lot. So, let's complete the table. Ayan. So, as you can see, we have the number of cars, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 15. Of course, sa isang kotse, ilan ba ang gulong? Ilan po ba ang gulong ng kotse? So, syempre, we have four, di ba? So, we have four wheels for one car. So, therefore, one car has four wheels. Ayan. Then, of course, if you have two cars, how many wheels do you have? You'll be having two times four, that is eight. Then, for three cars, we have three times four, that is twelve. And what if you have five cars? So, that will be five times four, that is twenty. And what if you have fifteen cars? Pag meron ka ng fifteen cars, Mayaman na mayaman ka na noon. Hindi, <laughs> joke lang po. <laughs> Pag may 15 cars ka na, ilan ang gulong ng 15 cars? We have 15 times 4, and that is 60. Okay, so therefore, you have already completed the table. Now, let's have this table. So, we have their number of cars. 1, 2, 3, 5, 15. And the number of wheels are 4, 8, 12, 20, and 60 respectively. Now the question is, or are, the questions are, ayan, let's fill in the blanks. Again, the ratio of the number of cars to the number of wheels is blank is to blank. Then second, if there are 12 wheels, then there are blank cars. O sige nga, would I uh, kindly complete the given statement? So, to make the statement true, paki fill in the blanks. So, again, for number one, the ratio of the number of cars to the number of wheels is blank is to blank. Then, second, if there are 12 wheels, then there are blank cars. Sige nga, ano po ba yan? Okay, so yan, may mga sagot na ba tayo dyan? Ano kaya ang ratio ng number of cars to the number of wheels. Blank is to blank. Then 12 wheels. Ilan ang cars? Okay. So, yan. May nakikita na ako. So, sagot ni Renz, Christian, Tobias. 1 is to 4. Ganun din si Trisha, Denise, Estanislao. 1 is to 4. Then, sa second problem, if there are 12 wheels, then there are blank cars. Ang sagot naman ni uh, Kyle Joseph, I three cars. Uh, si Princess Lorraine Del Rosario, one is to four, then three cars. Mm -hmm. Si Gwyneth Angeline, okay. Si Nerwin, one is to four, then three. Okay, let's see how you did. So, let's have the first one. So, as you can see, we can have the ratio of the number of cars to the number of wheels. So, obviously, you can, uh, you have the following. So, you have one is to four, two is to eight, 3 is to 12, 5 is to 20, 15 is to 60, right? But take note that 1 is to 4, 2 is to 8, 3 is to 12, 5 is to 20, and 15 is to 60 are just equal to each other. And when you simplify 2 is to 8, 3 is to 12, 5 is to 20, 15 is to 60, the result will be 1 is to 4. So therefore, you have 1 is to 4. Then of course, if there are 12 wheels, then there are how many cars? So since the ratio of the number of 
cars to the number of wheels is 1 is to 4. So we can have also the number, the ratio of the number of wheels to the number of cars is one is 4 is to 1. Kumi 12 wheels tayo, just simply divide 12 wheels by 4. So that's 12 divided by 4 is uh, 3. So therefore you have 3 cars. Okay, very good. Tama ang sagot ng ating mga dear students. Okay, let's consider the next problem. Okay, this time, let's have the last two problems. If there are 36 wheels, then there are blank cars. Again, if there are 36 wheels, then there are blank cars. And lastly, the number of blank and the number of blank are in the same proportion. Hmm. Ano kaya yun? Okay, if there are 36 wheels, then there are blank cars. Then the number of blank and the number of blank are in the same proportion. Okay, let's see. Ayan. Okay, we are waiting for the answers. Ayan, so may nakikita na ako. So according to Tristan Uriel Cruz, we have nine cars. Mm -hmm. Ayan, sagot naman ni Cyril, Nathalie, Onyate. Nine cars then. Ayan. Okay. Si Angelic Joyce Quintano, nine cars. Ella Alicer, nine. Aaron Katambing, Okay. So, parang pare-parehas yata ng sagot ang lahat. So, nine cars, of course. Just like what we did earlier. So, to, da to find the number of cars, we just simply divide the number of, of wheels by four. So, that's 36 divided by four. That is equivalent to nine. So, therefore, you have nine cars. Okay. And obviously, the answer to the last sentence is the number of cars. Ayan, the number of cars. And the number of wheels are in the same proportion. Siyempre, yun yung hinahanap natin. Okay, so that's what uh, ratio is. So let us define ratio. Okay, so what is ratio? So when you say ratio, kids, it is a comparison of two or more quantities. Particularly, we, talk, we are talking about here similar Quantities. So, ano ba ibig sabihin ng similar quantities, no? Dagdagan ko lang, no? So, similar quantities. So, usually, magkakaparehas dapat yung pinapag-compare natin. Halimbawa, yung kanina natin example, yung avocado and mangoes. So, yung avocado and mango are both fruits, di ba? They are both fruits, tama? So, parehas lang fruits. O pwede rin, uh, the ratio between, or the ratio of boys to girls. So, boys to girls, so, boys and girls, so pare lang uh, students, no? Or persons. Or what else? The ratio between mathematics books and science books. So, pare lang books. So, yun ibig sabihin ng ratio. We can have also two or more quantities. Math books, science books, uh, Filipino books. Ayan. Okay. Let's have the next. Of course, if we have two equivalent ratios... So, if we form two equivalent ratios, then we will be forming a proportion. So, when you say proportion, it is formed by having two equivalent ratios. Or it is the equality of two ratios. Of two ratios. Ayan. So, tanda niyo po yan ha? Proportion is the equality of two ratios. Okay. Now, how to determine whether two ratios form a proportion? So, paano nga ba natin malalaman kung proportion sila? Okay, so I have prepared two methods for this. So, first method. So, first, express both ratios in fraction form. So, kailangan ang ratios natin ay nasa fraction form. Second, you simplify the fractions. And the third one, if the fraction obtained in step two are the same, then the two ratios form a proportion. Okay, let us see. Let's have an example. Ayan. We have example 2 is to 5 and 6 is to 15. So to be able to determine whether 2 is to 5 and 6 is to 15 form a proportion, so we apply the method 1. So first, you express both ratios in fraction form. So 2 is to 5 can be written as 2 over 5 and 6 is to 15 can be written as 6 over 15. And of course, you're going to simplify 
the fraction. So first, 2 is to 5 or 2 over 5. Obviously, that's already in simplest form. So no need to simplify. So we have two fifths. So as islan tayo, kids. Let us try to simplify 6 is to 15. So if we simplify 6 is to 15, notice that 6 and 15 can be uh, both divisible by 3. So the GCF of 6 and 15 is 3. So you may divide 6 and 15 by their GCF, which is 3. So 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. So therefore, 6 over 15 is 2 over 5 in simplest form. So let's have step 3. If the fraction obtained in step 2 are the same, then the two ratios form a proportion. So obviously, since they are both the same, which is equal to 2 fifths, so we can say that the ratios 2 is to 5 and 6 is to 15 form a proportion. Ayan. So they form a proportion. So meaning, we can also say that 2 is to 5 is equal to 6 is to 15. Okay. So that's how to uh, determine whether two ratios form a proportion using the first method. So paano naman ng second method? Ayan. So dito papasok ang means and extremes. Okay. So to apply method 2, you just have to do the following. First, get the product of the means. Then second, get the product of the extremes. Then last step, if the products are equal, then the two ratios form a proportion. Ayan. So, kukunin natin ang product ng means at product ng extremes. Yan tanong, ano po ba yung product, ay ano po ba yung means and extremes? Ano ba ibig sabihin nun? Okay. So, again, let's consider our example earlier. So, if we have the two ratios, 2 is to 5 and 6 is to 15, paano mo ba malalaman ang means and extremes? Okay. So, pag sinabing means, sila yung dalawang terms uh, na kung saan we consider the second and the third element. So, by the way, in our given, you have four elements. You have first element, or the first number is two. The second one is five, followed by six, and followed by 15. So, when we get the means, so that is the second and the third element. Ayan. So, in this case, what is our second and third element? Or what are our second and third elements? So, we have 5 and 6. So, we get the product of 5 and 6. So, 5 and 6 are called the means. Ayan. So, in kumbaga na sa pinakaloob. So, 5 and 6. So, that is 5 times 6. So, what is 5 times 6? So, 5 times 6 is 30. You follow? Ayan. And lastly, second step, get the product of the extreme. So, syempre, dahil meron tayong means, which are the second and third elements, yung extremes naman, yun naman yung nasa magkabilang dulo. O yung tinatawag natin na first and fourth elements. Ayan. So, ano yung first and fourth elements? So, you have 2 and 15. So, 2 and 15 are called extremes. Ayan. Okay, so therefore, we multiply 2 and 15. So, 2 times 15, obviously, it's 30 also. And notice that they have the same products. So, the products, uh, the product of 5 and 6 and 2 and 15 is 30. So, therefore, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extreme. So, in yung concept ng proportion. So, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. Ayan. Tandaan nyo to, kids. So, dapat pare sila ng product. Okay, and dagdag ko na lang bago tayo matapos. Uh, we can also say that two fractions form a proportion. So, for instance, ipalitan ko lang to as a fraction. So, that is two-fifths and six-fifteenths. So, to determine whether the two fractions form a proportion, so, of course, we will do the cross multiplication or the cross products na tinatawag. Na kung saan, we will do the cross multiplication. So, 
we multiply 2 and 15 and 5 and 6. So 2 and 15, when multiplied, is 30. Similarly, for 5 and 6, that is also 30. So if their cross products are the same, then they form a proportion. So that is how to determine whether two ratios form a proportion. And that's the end of our lesson. But before we end our session, I'll be giving you a uh, homework. So ayan po ating homework for this afternoon. So please use the hashtag, okay? So dahil quarter to na tayo. So please use the hashtag Math6Q2. Uh, Math6Q2 Week 1. Ayan. So hashtag Math6Q2 Week 1. And please also use the hashtag Itulay Level Up. Dahil, gaya nga na nabanggit ko kanina, ang inyong mga itulay tutors ay mapapanood na rin sa inyong mga television via uh, IBC TV, Channel 13, and Signal TV. Ayan. So, according to the problem, uh, the problem is, for your homework, ratio A is equivalent to ratio B. Ratio B is equivalent to ratio C. The question is, do ratios A and C form a proportion? Explain your thinking. Yan lang man po ang ating problem for this session. So, medyo explanation lang po tayo. So, again, ha, our homework is ratio, is, uh, ratio A is equivalent to ratio B. Ratio B is equivalent to ratio C. The question is, do ratios A and C form a proportion? Explain your thinking. Okay. So, maraming maraming salamat po. Ulit sa inyong lahat, my dear students. So, please scan this. Ayan, scan me. So, para malaman po namin ang inyong mga saloobin, kung may kailangan pa po ba kaming improve, or kailangan po namin suggestions po ba kayo na pwede namin magawa. Binabasa po yan ng ating mga uh, mentees and yung mga heads natin. Okay? So, therefore, thank you very much, my dear students, at sa lahat ng mga viewers natin sa ating DepEd Itulay Online Tutorial for Mathematics 6. Up next, Tutor Rose Ann and Tutor Jolly of Math 7. So again, this has been your tutor for today, Tutor Andre. So hopefully, uh, makasama ko na si Tutor Prince by next week. So Tutor Prince, see you next week din po. And again, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Uh, happy weekend, everybody. Keep safe and God bless. Bye-bye! Ang husay naman, natapos mo ang iyong tutorial session kasama ang iyong mahusay na itulay tutor. May bago ka bang natutuhan? I-share na yan gamit ang hashtag itulay level up. Huwag aalis ha dahil may susunod pang programa na pwede mo rin panoorin at salihan. Dahil naghihintay na ang iyong mga tutors. Happy learning dito sa itulay!